Good morning, everybody. It is an absolutely beautiful day here in Crescent City. Sun's out, the wind has calmed down. So you know what that means. It means it's time to hit the road. Travel day. Travel day. I don't know if you guys can see this. This campground is right on this little bay here. Can you guys see the, the steam coming off of the mud? It, it hasn't been sunny here. The bay, when the water goes out, leaves this mud base. And you can actually see a guy walking way out there. You're not going to be able to see him. But it leaves this mud base. And with the sun coming out today, causing steam to come off of there. So that's, that's kind of interesting. I think it will be hard to see in camera. It's going to be hard to see. This is the campground. This is Shoreline RV Park. It has a pretty view. It really has a pretty view of the bay. And you see the tides. And you see the lighthouse. And the harbor. But... The campground itself is just, eh. Yeah, it's and just it's, a flat lot, right? It's 40 bucks a night and it's full hookups. The nice thing about it is a uh, pull in. So you actually, your front windshield will look into the water. That, yeah. That's rare to find. And they do have both RV spots and uh, trailer spots on the, on the other side. On the bay. So that some of them are pull in, some of them are back in. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty, pretty cool. So it was, a, it was a great means to an end. Crescent City was actually not a bad little town, so. Yeah. I mean, it was okay to just stop overnight, I would say. Yeah. This one I will have been okay. I don't think I'd do a week here, but yeah, no. a couple days is all right. We did the lighthouse, we saw Stout Grove. Want to really thank Sheila and Charlie for yes. showing us around and taking us out to Stout Grove. That was really, really cool. But uh, if you're ready to go, we can hit the road. Yes. Let's do Let's it. Let's go. I'm gonna bring your buddy. You guys, you guys want to come with us or what's the deal? No? <laughs> We don't have any food for you, crazy little things. As I'm backing out here, I'm gonna give you guys just a little bit of my thoughts as, as we're backing up a tow dolly. I mean, everyone says you can't back up a tow dolly. It's not true. Tow dolly is just a small trailer. A small trailer is very difficult to back up because it turns so quick, but it it's totally possible. Take your time and I'm gonna talk to you about what I do. So as you can see, I'm looking down in the mirror there on the driver's side. You cannot see the tow dolly, but you cannot see the tow dolly on either side. That means that it's directly behind the RV, which is okay. So I'm gonna slowly back up. I turn my wheels to the opposite side to get it to start to appear. And so you can see there that the tow dolly is starting to appear, right? All I want it to do is track out where it would have followed me coming in. And so I just, as it starts to turn, I come back to the to the dolly and do what's called the follow. You're gonna follow the follow the trailer, right? And so you just continue backing up. Now if it's really tight, you're gonna have wanna have a spotter on your other side to make sure that you're not gonna hit any, anything. But you can see that the tow dolly there just continues to go out onto the road. Once I know that it's onto the road, I can just back out and follow it out onto the road. And so as I'm backing up, now it's straight and you can see Barely in this mirror there, you can just see the tow dolly there. And in this mirror here, barely see the tow dolly there. So you know that it's straight behind you. It's really not that hard. You just gotta take your time, really small movements on the wheel, and know that the the rear swing of the of an RV, of a motorhome at least accentuates how much that little dolly is going to turn. So that's what makes it very difficult. But the same thing would be if it was a boat trailer or a trailer or anything like that. The easiest thing to back up is a small truck with a huge trailer. Like a, the 40 foot truck and trailer for me was an easy thing to back up because the movement of it, the motion of the trailer is very, very minute compared to the tractor that it's pulling. So that's it. We still owe you guys a on backing up video because I still see people that have a hard time backing a class C into a space or a B into a space and it's all about how they align to the space and the overhang and the pivot point of the back wheels and all that kind of stuff so I know I know I still owe you guys that and as we roll out of the shoreline RV park I just want to mention that when we were in the Cloverdale, California area at Russian River, we got to meet quite a few viewers down there. How, how, you know, who knew that there was going to be so many people in that little area, but we got to meet Bruce Taylor and had some pizza. That was awesome. 
and then we rolled down to Santa, was it Santa Rosa? Uh, yes. Santa I think Rosa. it was Santa Rosa, and we got to meet Jenny and Craig Billings, and had uh, lunch down there with the chaos of the of the triathlon going on, but super nice folks. And then just before we left, we got to spend a little bit of time with Sean. Uh, I think it's Sean Pardue, and just great people. We love meeting yes. you guys out on the road. And we miss you, Debbie and Mark, because you were out of town, but they were in Santa Rosa. Too. Oh, that's right, that's right. But if we're in your town and we can meet, we will, we'd love to meet you guys. It's just not always possible, so if we miss you guys, we're so sorry. Uh, try not to be too angry with us, but we will definitely try if we can. Sometimes we just don't check in an area. We've got so much work to do, we're trying to get caught up. But we absolutely love meeting the viewers. What a great bunch of people, and we've made some great friends over the last year and a half. So I will say that. Some just, just amazing people in an amazing country with some amazing places to visit. How cool is that? North we head up the Pacific Coast. We're gonna be staying on 101 today, all the way up to, where are we going? Lincoln? Florence. Florence. Florence, and we're gonna try out another thousand trails. Okay, Lori, this hasn't happened in quite a while. Oh my God! Welcome so to Oregon! Woohoo! <laughs> we have been in California for over well, way over 800 miles, but from San Diego to the Oregon border is 858 miles. It's a big state when you go north to, north to south, or south to north. I mean, last time we crossed was when we went, we were going to Palm Springs. Yeah, and that was in March? I don't remember. No, April? I don't remember. But this is both of our first time in Oregon. I've never been to Oregon. Lorena has never been to Oregon. I just wanted to say that I'm really looking forward to you because of the fluid, the signs, and the hikes, and the waterfalls. I'm really looking forward to this thing. Although, I'm, we're just going to go like coasting, so we're not going to get to see everything in this thing. We're going to get to see this much of it. This much of it, like always. Have arrived in Florence, Florence, Oregon. Oregon. Yeah. And uh, by the way, this is Robert. Robert was walking from Eureka all the way up here, like I don't know, 200 miles or some crazy shit. So we picked him up back in. Uh, where the heck did we pick you up? Brookings. Brookings. And he's been riding with us ever since. And uh, he's jumping out here as well. And he's still got 50 miles to go yet. But. Uh, this is where we're gonna spend the night. We are actually back in the Thousand Trails, just a little ways, so we will do that. But uh, we're gonna get some fuel first before we head over to the Thousand Trails, so. Sweet, oh, that is really freaking narrow. Let's see. All right, all checked in here at South Jetty. Wow. 
Good morning, everybody. We're just getting ready to roll out of the campground here this morning. And people have asked, you know, the difference in size of the coach from when it's wide open to when it's closed. So this is the coach when it's wide open. Now we can so, actually dance here if you want. Quite a bit of space. This is this is the dance floor, absolutely. And then when we pull the slide in, it comes in about two and a half to three feet. So we'll show you that now. My lovely assistant will hit the buttons. And now there's only space enough for us to walk through basically. Yeah, so it's still quite a bit of space and that's why we don't like, go ahead and sit on the couch. We don't, when we're like in a Walmart or something like that, we don't open this up at all because we've still got plenty of room in here. We can still see the TV from the from we the can couch. Sit in the couch. We can go and have dinner. I mean, I can cook and all that without having to open the slide. Yeah. And I think that's one of the big difference from class A to some of the trailers or even uh, fifth wheels. Once the slides come in, you have no access to a lot of the stuff. That when they're out, it actually gives you a lot more space right. than Class A. But when they're in, you have no access to some stuff. Their advantage is when you're parked, not so much when you're going down the road. This, yeah. this we are able to go down the road. Uh, Lori's able to go to the bathroom, which is super important to her. And if we need to make a sandwich quick or something, pull over on the side of the road, which we did the other day, right on the edge of the cliff overlooking the ocean. It's amazing. But lots of space. Mm -hmm. It comes in behind the driver's seat just a little bit. And you can see it comes back in there and... Uh, now we're good to go. You ready? I'm ready. Let's do it. Travel day. Travel day. One more thing before we go. Thought we'd show you guys the site quick. This is really one of the first thousand trails we've been to where the sites are enormous and they're separated very much like a state park. The spots we're staying in are water and electric only. So you can see Lori's parked there. We have all the way back to the picnic table back there. Nice. Big, huge, wide sites, and brand new electrical and brand new water. So they are in the process of upgrading this park. The site next to us is closed for that purpose, but you can see how huge this site is. Big rigs, no problem whatsoever. For the most part, a, a, a pretty nice park. And this park is very heavily wooded, so in the middle of the summer, probably nice because you don't get that much sun, you get some, uh, it's just fresh. But right now that it's winter, I wish we could have a little bit of sun coming in. <laughs> yes. Uh, because it gets dark in there too. And two, it's like the dunes are just right next door pretty much. Yeah, if you have any cool. kind of dunes, AT, uh, dune buggies, ATVs, stuff like that, the National Recreation, the Dunes Recreation, whatever it is, right down the street. We went down there last night, but let's talk about the rest of that stuff when we're driving. And the ocean is close to this park. It is. It is very close. So... Florence, Oregon. Very, very beautiful little town. Very, very beautiful campground. But again, still some thousand trails issues. We'll talk about that in a sec. Oh, in case anybody's wondering how many miles we've got on the coach, 126,000 as of this morning. Now we gotta roll over to the dump station and then we'll head out up the Oregon coast. Car is hooked up and we are ready to roll. You can see there the the pool area, very, very nice. This building here, oh, see the back doesn't look so, well, it, it's still nice. The front is completely refurbished. When you pull in, it looks like the building's brand new. You go inside, kind of dated, a little bit run down. <laughs> Again, typical, uh, a, few, a few chairs and a couch and the inside could look really nice. They, the restroom, same thing, very, very dated. They were clean but very, very old and dated. But I will say that this is better than most of the Thousand Trails parks we've been to. As far as, this is a campground. It, it's not a park, it's a campground. It's a place where you feel like you can bring your family and come camping. Mm -hmm. You're in a wooded area, it's very, very cool. It's just the facilities themselves that need a little bit of updating. Staff was very, very fun. Very and very friendly, so that was good. I don't know if you guys need that, but we don't. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Everything was awesome. Thank you. 
super close to Florence, Oregon, which was a cool little harbor town right on the Sousla River. Yeah, just literally across the bridge. It's a historic bridge. And the little downtown was very cute. A lot of restaurants and cafes. Now about this campground, it's like the one thing is that there's one section with full hookups. Most of it is water electric. So just be warned, like, if you don't get that one spot in the full hookup section, you're gonna be water and electric. Yeah, and again, that's not a big deal. You don't need the sewer until you're leaving, really. So you just swing by the well, the dump station and dump. Of course, dump. it's not a big deal because yeah. we can last a long time without sewage. But I know some people that they need it. Well, yeah, if you have to dump every couple of days, then yeah, that's a pain in the butt. But we easily a week before we're going to need that. On and up the road, today's going to be a long day. So we're probably not gonna stop and do too much. We're just gonna cruise the highway or we're gonna cruise 101 up the coast at least. Up the beautiful Oregon coast. So enjoy the coast and we'll see you guys in a little bit. Unless we get sidetracked. Which can happen. Okay, we stopped here at this Cape Perpetua Overlook Visitor Center and wanted to check it out, see what was going on here. It just looked really cool as we were coming down the road. We can't say. There's no parking for There's RV parking. A rig this big. Just short. Yeah. I, I would say if you're uh, pulling anything over 25 feet, maybe anything over 30 feet, you're not going to get in and a coach any bigger than 30 feet towing maybe even smaller, not gonna get in. So we just barely made it through the parking lot and we're heading back out and back up the coast. So again, one of the reasons why a smaller rig gives you more options to... I mean, if you want to travel some this big like ours, I mean, what we need to do probably will be have to stop every, what, 50 miles? Yeah so we could actually drive into places. So it's not like you cannot discover these areas having a large rig like ours. It's just, you just need to plan being stopping more often so you can discover where. Right, unhook the car and, and then explore in the car. But as far as just stopping in various areas yeah. with the rig, just not possible, so. Like it, we've seen many areas we will have light to pull over and just see stuff and we just can't. And you can see out the front window, it's beautiful, but not somewhere that we can stop and check out. to make a turn onto Highway 18 to go across to Portland. Really cool fact, we just crossed the 45th parallel, which is halfway between the equator and the North Pole. That's pretty cool. Super cool, how cool is that? Yeah. And we've made it to Portland, time to go check in. Good morning, afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, <laughs> we kind of got here to the campground in Portland at Portland Fairview RV Park and uh, didn't film anything last night. So 
uh, we will say it is an absolutely gorgeous campground and this is part of the trails collection right this is yeah, encore this is an encore uh campground so it's part of your trails collection and it costs you 20 dollars a night if you have the trails collection that that's a very affordable price uh this campground has a lot of annual sites but all of them immaculate yep like pretty nice campground it goes to show you that you can have the annual sites but their expectations are obviously extremely high here and we'll show some pictures of the campgrounds maybe in the next video but uh, for now we're gonna head into portland and just do a quick walk through over there and then we'll uh see what's there to, to do over the next couple of days scouting today basically today is a scouting day let's roll Okay, we are here in downtown Portland. We're just gonna walk around a little bit. We're gonna check out REI. There's a big REI here. Just see what else is downtown. Not gonna spend too long down here. Just kind of a little bit this afternoon. Yeah, well, we are right now at the Pearl District. It looks pretty cool. You guys can see Lorena she's down there looking at jackets we're in REI I'm bored out of my freaking mind I don't like shopping I think she's almost done now though I'll pay for this later when she sees this what is he saying never mind we've been in downtown Portland for a couple of hours now and all we've seen is the inside of REI I needed stuff but now I'm done so. Now she's done and we're going to take a quick walk around town, maybe find a place to have some refreshments. <laughs> den there is crazy you go down the stairs it's this tiny little bar and there's a door that looks like it goes to the bathroom and you open that door and go through a little hallway that has a bathroom sink in it and you're in this pretty decent sized music hall down there live music and oddly enough the smell of marijuana wafting through the air <laughs> <laughs> The lady, the cashier over at REI told us about Powell's Bookstore, said we might be able to pick up the milepost here, the Alaskan uh, Travel Guide, and said it was one of the largest bookstores still left in existence, and we just went by over here and it looked like it was just like this little bookshop, a coffee shop. It literally runs an entire block in here, and so we're gonna go ahead and check it out, but it looks- New like, and used books too. Yes, new and used both. It looks amazing. That's what we're looking for. So this place has three and a half floors. It's an old automotive building. They have nine rooms and they have 3,500 sections of books. 68,000 square feet of books. It's pretty crazy. You can spend all day here. Yes.
I was just telling Lori that sometimes we walk by things like bookstores or a corner store or a tree and we take for granted that it's just what it is. But if you look into the history of it, it might be something really cool like that Powell's bookstore. They said the guy started it in 1970 in Chicago and then his dad opened this location here in 79 and started buying used books and now they do over 45 million a year in book sales and they buy 3,000 used books a day so that's pretty cool. I guess when you're in the city you park wherever you can this thing is really cool I'd love to see this working it's like three or four stories of automated parking that's pretty cool hey everybody I hope you enjoyed the trip up the Oregon coast with us and a little bit in Portland we'll have some more in the next video but this is what we're gonna call this one so if this is your first time here it'd be awesome if you hung out with us a little bit get to know us which means you gotta hit that subscribe button it'd be really cool if you hit the like button and we'll see you again in another one very very soon take care now I was just telling Lori that that's sometimes we but let me go that let me start over again I was just telling Lorena that sometimes that's we walk by holy crap some bit the